Hey, this is Brian Stillman with Be Terrific. We're here at CES 2020. We're in Las Vegas, Nevada, in the Las Vegas Convention Center. But more excitingly, at least for me, we're at the Sony booth. This massive, giant, uh, to call it a booth is to do it a disservice. It's, uh, I mean, there's some significant square footage it's, here. It's a cavern. It's a sure. cavern. I'm excited because I use a lot of Sony gear. I, I'm not just sort of sucking up to, to David here. Um, I shoot a lot of stuff on a Sony FS7. Uh, in the studio, we use FS5s. Um, I grew up with Sony Walkman. So this is actually very, very cool. Um, David, you, uh, you, you said you don't have a lot of consumer, new consumer tech this year. Right. It's all about the technology. Yeah, typically in a show like this, you get a product lineup of things you'll see in the store in the next four to six months. Sony's taking a departure from that. We're really showcasing uh, a lot of the technologies that we have that we're, that we're developing for music, uh, for film production, for, uh, for uh, VR for automotive, that was a big surprise, Sony made a car, uh, as well as what we're doing for sports and of course display. I mean really the only 2020 products you're going to see here are a lineup of some of our uh, new premium model TVs. All right, so why don't we do a walkthrough, sure. talk about some of the equipment, talk about some of the technology, and we'll, we'll see where that takes us. Sounds great. Sounds great. So yeah, so we start over here. So. There's been huge advances in the last you know, decades with movie sound, right? You've went to five channel and seven channel with Dolby True HD and DTS Master Audio, and of course now we have three dimensional and spatial sound, but music has still remained fairly static. It's still left and right stereo, uh, two dimensions. So uh, Sony is developing something called Reality Audio, uh, which takes that same kind of technology and brings it to the creative music artist. So instead of positioning you in the audience, it's more idea about positioning you on the stage and letting the creative intent of the artist decide where that, those sounds are going to come from. That's pretty incredible. Um, you know, I've played in bands, so I know what it's like when you're on stage and you're hearing, you're sort of immersed in the environment of the music. Um, very different than when you're in front and you're just getting hit with a sort of stereo sound system. Um, what, what is going on with the tech for that? Take me through that a little bit. Well, so the technology we're using is MPEG H 3D, which is an open standard codec. Uh, so anybody who wants to play in that sandbox will be able to do so. Uh, and it's really, the technology is very, very similar to what you'd find in a, in a movie where your objects are spatially located and, and volume is done. Product wise, uh, we've connected our WH 1000 Mark III's and WF's uh, to a headphone connect app. So one of the things that's interesting and the display is they'll actually take a picture of your ear and analyze the shape of it to uh, deliver the optimal audio performance through your headphones. They'll take a picture of your ear <laughs> to optimize the performance uh, of, the head, of, of the audio in the headphones. You said that twice, but I still find that sort of amazing. That's like taking it to a level that I think um, I'm, I'm sort of speechless on that. I'm curious, I want to back up just for a second sure. with the 360 audio, with the, the sort of putting you in that space. What does that mean for musicians, for audio engineers and stuff like that? Are they mixing the music differently? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're, they're mixing things differently. Instead of, like I said, instead of determining spatial relationships left and right now it's left right top back rear however you can imagine it so you know in a live performance you probably might want the singer here but maybe the you know, the backup singers clapping his back behind you and the piano players over there and the drum guys up there however the artist feels they want to make that happen uh, they can do that that's incredible. I mean, we already do 5-1 mixes when we're making documentaries, movies, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And then we deliver that. We deliver a maybe a 3-1 mix. We also deliver a stereo mix. We deliver all different mixes to the final uh, wherever our movies are going. So now it's going to be a similar situation with music. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so this is so the software uses Sony's Headphone Connect app. And what you want to do, we're going to do the ear, ear shape. Thank you. We're going to agree to that. So what you want to do is position your face. Uh, am I going to do this? Okay, I'll do this. Do this. I can get this to slide down a little. So they're literally going to take a picture of my ear. So, well, so we're going to try and lower this. A little bit more. <laughs> Let's get the short guy to do this. Um, okay. There it is. Oh, I see it. Yep. It's just a little clamp. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah. Sorry about that. So we'll just do this. Death by demo. There ah, we there we go. Okay, so now, All right. so if you position your face, uh, let's, let's go back. Right. Okay. And then so, position your face again in the middle so it gets green. Move a little closer. 
Oh, I got it, I got it, okay. There you go. Now turn to the other direction. Turn towards me. Captured photo. So now... So now, uh, well. my left ear has been successfully captured. My other left. Photo. Photo. All right, so now. it's got photos of both my ears. Um, right ear has been successfully captured. Start analyzing ear shape. So now it's analyzing your ears. Uh, it'll take approximately 30 seconds. It doesn't even seem to be close to 30 seconds. It's nice and quick. Scanning and analyzing my ears. Your ears have been successfully analyzed. So now, the headphones, well, now you can select music from three sources. We have Deezer, Nugs, and Tidal. They're all currently doing streaming music um, in, in for 360 Reality Audio. In the future, um, you'll be able to also do downloads. Uh, and since we're working in conjunction with Warner Brothers and Universal Music, there'll be a large playlist of availability. All right, so I'm going to try this right now. Um, so I got the headphones on, and we're just going to pick one at random. Tidal, okay. No, 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 no. That's good. No, that's good. All right, and uh, let's see how this sounds. Oh, let's. Uh, okay, uh, I, I don't even care. Um, what do we got here? Um, you know what? I'm gonna just close my eyes and pick one at random. Uh, that's what I'm gonna listen to. Oh man. Okay, now I gotta pick this. All right. So. Uh, yep. Oh. Whoa. Okay, so this is wild. It really sounds like I'm surrounded by the... Uh, sounds like I'm in a live performance surrounded by the musicians, as if they're all around me. Um, here, I'm actually going to skip ahead because he's talking. Uh, let's get right into the music here. Um, all right. So I got a guitar, a little on my right. Um... Let's see, I've apparently picked something with a slightly slow intro. Oh, there we go. A lot of funk on my right here. This is pretty good. You guys don't know, but we've been standing above the Galaxy booth for the last three days, and I've got this loop in my head because they're playing music in Galaxy. This is uh, helping to erase that. So, Whoa. <laughs> yeah, this is wild. It really sounds like I'm in the middle of this uh, musical environment. Yeah, that's incredible. There's literally music surrounding me as I wear those headphones. It doesn't sound like it's coming from the left and the right. It sounds like there's something positioned right behind me. It's something that I'd expect if I was in a room with multiple speakers, uh, theater environment or something like that, or at a show right. up on stage with the musicians. Um, I've never seen that from headphones, or, or heard that yeah, yeah. from headphones before. It's, it's a completely new way of listening to music, and people have the same sort of reaction that you've had. It's like, this is very different and very exciting. You know, that you don't have that sort of two-dimensionality to it. Now it's three dimensions. How does it do that? Well, I, I, honestly, it's at least the technology is very similar to what you find in atmospheric for, for movies. It's all computer based. A lot of it is psychoacoustics because you only do only have two drivers. Right. So a lot of it is just tricky. I've only got two ears. You've only got two ears, exactly. <laughs> well, that, that's where the analyzation of your ear comes into play is to help help with the psychoacoustics of that. That is awesome. So this is definitely some cool new tech. 360 reality audio. Um, they scan your ear. Now here's the question I have for you. Let's say um, this goes to market as a consumer product. Uh, do you, oh, you just this, use your this, phone. This is. Oh, this is out. This okay. Is out, yeah. So you just use your phone to scan your ear mm -hmm. and follow yeah, the instructions. The Sony Headphone Connect app is available on both iOS and Android. It's free. Uh, it works with your Sony headphones. So you said you just scan your ears and then enjoy your music. So subscribe to one of these services. That is awesome. So you can do that today, um, and then it's just a matter of time until your favorite musician is mixing their audio to uh, conform to it and to give you what you want. Um, personally, I'm looking forward to hearing Slayer as if I'm sitting up on the stage. Will it happen? I don't know. They're breaking up, but we remain hopeful. We remain hopeful. Uh, so what else do you have for us? Well, so just a couple of other iterations. One that we're showing here is a single speak, single point speaker for 360 Reality Audio. Again, stereo, right? If you get out of the sweet spot, 
it's not so great. But with this speaker, anywhere in the room, whether in terms of both horizontal and vertical position, sounds pretty much the same. So there's no loss of fidelity, no loss of, of music quality. Can we check that out? That might be something I can maybe demo for the people at home because I've got a microphone and uh, as opposed to wearing headphones, which won't give them any information at all. Um, so. So anywhere in this room is as if the speakers are optimally placed for me. So I'm walking around, checking this out. Um, I don't know if you guys at home can hear this. I'm going to try and hold up the microphone, and hopefully this will work. And you won't. Ideally, you're going to hear the sound uh, equally well wherever I'm moving in the room, as if uh, as if the speakers were almost following me. Are you guys getting the audio from the music? Okay, great. So I'm going to move over to another side of the room. Okay, so it definitely gets a little louder as I move closer to the speaker, but in terms of sound quality, being in that corner of the room, being over here is not drastically different. Um, it's just a little bit louder. So I'm going to try moving over to this corner. And then the music turned off. So, so we're moving to a, moving to a different song. All right, um, we're gonna try this again. Let's see if it sounds the same. Oh, that's wild. Yeah, I'm not getting any of that sort of stereo field effect that I would normally get, um, or any sort of like Doppler effect or anything weird like that. Um, that's pretty crazy from a single speaker that you can just sort of stick anywhere in your room. Yeah, we think it's going to be a very uh, consumer friendly product. The less gear that you have to have, right, it's a little bit easier for the normal consumer to be able to enjoy it and get the best possible performance rather than having multiple speakers placed around the room to deliver that same experience. I can definitely see it also being useful in almost a retail tail environment or something like that as well. Yeah, it would be very easy to set this up in almost any you know, con commercial or uh, consumer house. So, so this is this gives you an idea of how the, the, the audio is placed. So you can see the different balls are saying um, that's you know the orange ones are, are coming up. So the sound is coming from behind you at that height. Um, you know, so it's just it's a, it's a graphic representation of how it's worked. Is that's the computer software that's used to to develop it. So you can assign a channel to a space and then adjust the volume and tonality of it that way. Man, I have enough trouble mixing for stereo. I can't even imagine the uh, level of expertise that goes into mixing for that, but you know, it's the wave of the future. Yeah, thank for, thankfully for computers, we don't have to worry about they do all the work for us, and then that's called Skynet, so. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so what's next? So this is actually one of the more popular things in the booth. So Sony Pictures Entertainment is here for the first time in many years, and they've developed a, a system called AtomView, A-T-O-M, um, and it uses our crystal LED display, which you can see over there, to, to three-dimensionally render a backdrop. So that in conjunction with our Sony Venice camera, um, we're able to eliminate a lot of CGI effect because uh, that's very expensive to do, and of course there's a lot of that. So let's go take a look. So what, were you gonna, what you're going to see here, so this is actually the Ecto-1 from the original 1984 Ghostbusters movie. This is the screen-used Ecto-1. This is the screen-used Ecto-1, so, so we, we keep stuff. This is super cool to me. I actually collect movie props. Okay. Um, so being able to see the actual screen-used Ecto-1 for one of my favorite movies is super cool. Um, I, I work on a TV show where we, we discuss movies, and one of them was Ghostbusters. So. Mm -hmm. This is thrilling on many, many levels. Oh, I, I, I want to thank you, sir, for giving me this opportunity. Um, okay, so what's going on in this section of the booth? Okay, so if you, come up, if you come over here, you can see. So if you look at the backdrop, it looks like a stage set. But as you see the cameras on a dolly and moving, look at the way the backdrop is changing. You can see that the whole thing is shifting in order to keep the perspective on the, on the TVs the same. So it's creating the parallax effect that we would so, get yes. from a physical studio. Yeah, so they do what's called a volumetric production, which means they go out with 3D cameras and they map the entire backdrop that they're using. So this is, a, this is from Sto Sony Studio Pictures lot. And so they, do, so they do that volumetric capture and then they display it on our crystal LED technology. Uh, crystal LED, which we'll, we'll see in a little bit, uh, has ve it's very close to our industry standard BVMX 300 color and contrast grading monitor. Uh, so what you're going to see is, 
this shifts in order to do that. They told us that it took five days to do the volumetric capture of the of the backdrop. If you if you get a chance to look at the bottom, you'll see some leaves that are blowing past and the curb. Those are CGI. It took two weeks to do that. Wow. So, so if you can imagine you know, going someplace and capturing a scene and then being able to take it into a studio and have complete control of the environment. And then, of course, if we decide in five years to make another Ghostbusters movie, we already have the backdrop available to us. And so one of the, one of the interesting things about this is the fact that all of these, if you look at the video camera or the display up there, all of the reflections on the car, all of the lights passing through the windows, if this was a green screen, those would all have to be rendered. But because the backdrop also acts as the lighting source, all of it is photorealistic and actually the way it should would be in real life. This is amazing. I am watching the set shift. I'm watching the perspective change, the way it changes when you move a camera around a physical space, but I'm not moving. It's disconcerting, it's so realistic. Watching the hook and ladder, you know, the Ghostbusters headquarters shift around and seeing the sign move, seeing the perspective change exactly as it would if we were in a physical space and the camera were moving, uh, that is, uh, that's incredible. I mean, it looks real. My brain is completely fooled by that. <laughs> and I'm standing here, I can only imagine if I was watching it through that secondary filter of a, t of a, of a movie theater, it would be even more realistic. There it is up there. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, so that's just incredible. Oh, oh, hey, nice to meet you. I'm Brian Stillman. Um, We're doing a live feed, Bill. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so this is, uh, this is amazing. Yeah, this is incredible. You. We think it is, too. I, so where, where are we going to start seeing this technology? Anything coming up where we can kind of well, uh, movies coming out where that are currently using it? Well, right now we're getting the software ready to launch, and uh, it could be used in a variety of um, places. Hopefully, you never know where it's being used. That's the whole purpose, right? Obviously, yeah. um, <laughs> but as a as a filmmaker myself, just seeing it is super cool, and being able to sit in the movie theater and go like, I know how they're doing that would right. be neat. Um, but there's nothing; it's not currently in place with any productions that we're aware of. So, so with LED, with the LED screens, no. Currently, the same uh, software or Adam View technology is being used in uh, the, sh the TV show Shark Tank to uh, shoot the interviews at the end of uh, and at the end of each pitch. Um, the LED uh, use of this technology is something new that we brought to CES. We've come up. This is this is like fresh out of the box, and so there are there are definitely uh, potential projects that will come up that will use this technology. Super cool. I mean, we're looking at cutting edge filmmaking right here. Um, Green screens becoming the thing of the past, I guess. This is pretty much it for them. Everyone put that green paint away. No more yeah, walls, yeah, yeah, yeah. no more matting. Oh man, saving hours. Yeah, in front of a tennis ball. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It saves hours of work and only costs zillions of dollars. Right. So it's perfect. Yeah. What a trade off. That's what a trade off. Right. Um, that's awesome. And you're shooting this on the new Venice cameras, right? That's correct. Um, yeah. Anything you can tell me about those? Probably Anything you can tell me about the Venice cameras? Sir. I'm super excited about those. Not that I'll ever get to use one, but I, oh, of course, uh, I'm into them. They're accessible. The Venice camera is a full-frame uh, 6K sensor. You're able to shoot anamorphic, uh, full-frame anamorphic as well as um, spherical, so you can get a full 4K output. And what what's beautiful about this setup that we have here, using the crystal LED along with the Venice, along with our our um, HDR asset in the background there. Um, and AtomView is able to provide a full HDR pipeline, is we're actually displaying that asset in HDR, we're capturing it in HDR on the Venice camera, and then we're feeding it, they're feeding that live feed of the scene back to these uh, Sony uh, Bravia A9G OLEDs in HDR as well. That, so that's why we're able to maintain highlight, uh, saturation, have all that detail in there that is exactly in the scene all the way through the pipeline. And that's a big thing for me as a filmmaker. I'm always shooting in log. I'm using right. Sony Log, S-Log3. And, you know, we have to then grade it for Rec. 709 output, um, which for the viewers at home basically compresses the heck out of everything. Blacks, everything sinks into inky blackness. You lose those darks and lights that give everything such a realistic look. But this is continuing straight through the pipe. Straight through the pipe. Exactly, HDR, exactly, S-Log3, S-Gamma 3 dot cine into the camera, converted back to PQ for the displays. But yeah, I mean, of course, you can always do a Rec. 709 output as well, yeah. but, <laughs> but, but, but this, is the, this is the benefit, right, is you yeah. get to actually keep the, yellow, the, the green saturation, the blue saturation of the lights, the highlight detail, all of that's captured and able to be processed 
through real time as you're seeing this as a real time image. So yeah, I mean, what I'm seeing with my eyes looks exactly like what I'm seeing on the screen. Exactly, and that is the the intention. You can always make it look different if that's what you want. Well, but, uh, yeah, of course, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When is the Venice available yet? Is uh, that something Venice has been out for how long now? Probably about a year, about a year. So the Venice is available, and it, you know, many, many. Many uh, movies and episodics have been shot on the Venice. Um, there's a you know fairly big feature that's going to be coming out soon that was shot on it from Sony Pictures as well as other studios. And that would be from Sony Pictures. That's uh, Bad Boys Three. Oh man, Bad Boys Three, man! I grew up on Bad Boys and yeah, Bad Boys yeah, yeah. Two. A uh, friend of mine actually was a shooter on Bad Boys Two. He was a Steadicam operator. Oh, when they blew up the house, he was there. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's very cool. Um, great. Well, thank you so much for taking a moment to stop and talk to us about some tech that I'm excited about. Uh, David, what else we got? So, how much time we got? Uh, much you uh, yeah, I don't care. Let's, okay. Uh, well, so, so, you know, obviously Sony's uh, in the gaming industry, and of course you found out that all we announced about PlayStation 5 at this show was the logo. Um, but, what, you know, one of the areas that we're working on, of course, is 3D, VR, and AR. Uh, typically right now, of course, you're, uh, you're wearing goggles uh, or glasses in order to achieve that effect. Uh, one of the things that we're showcasing this uh, this year is a combination of three technologies. If you're familiar with our uh, Sony uh, cameras, we know that we have an eye sensing software, so for portraiture. Okay. So we're using that that eye sensing software in conjunction with a binocular display and software in order to achieve a 3D a 3D imaging effect. So let's go take a look at that. Great. Looking forward to it. So, what are we looking at? You know, so again, you know, 3D and VR usually require external equipment. What we have the ability to do is using this uh, eye sensing field and this binocular display is to allow you to build 3D design, 3D gaming, entertainment. Uh, there's medical applications, there's architectural applications. We had a group from a uh, US auto uh, manufacturer that came through a couple days ago. They were looking at it for showroom applications. So. What's nice about it is, is when you, since it detects your eyes and as you move through the field, it, it, it changes the image perspective to match where your eyes are at. So you get a perfect 3D rendering. That is super cool. Um, and is, is this tech out there in gaming now? Or is it's this not in gaming now. It's, it's, this is a proof of concept. Like I said, a lot of the stuff you're going to see at this show is things that Sony is working on for next year, two years, five years, a decade down the road. Who knows? Uh, you're continuing improvement. Well, that's something interesting. I was talking to some other manufacturers here. The idea of showing off stuff that's early in the game, still somewhat prototypey, still somewhat like in development. Mm -hmm. uh, you're comfortable doing that. I'm surprised. I would think all that stuff would be kept under wraps. Well, I mean, you know, Sony, first of all, is an engineering company. Always have been. We invented things like Blu-ray and 4K. Uh, of course, one of the focuses of here is Sony is a creative entertainment company. Uh, you know, we own four movie studios, a TV studio, a large music catalog, a gaming system, and we really want our customers to understand not only what we're doing now, but what's coming down the road. Yeah, if, if you go to the auto show, right? You don't take a picture of the the 2020, you know, Corolla, right? You take the picture of the, you know, the, of the concept car. And we really want people to get excited about what they, you know, what they can see and what's what the future is going to bring from an entertainment standpoint. Very cool. Um, speaking of cars, yeah, we made a car. <laughs> Sony made a car. Why not? Why not, why not make a car? Uh, well, so <coughs> Sony is the world's largest manufacturer of image sensors. So, do you have an iPhone, Ryan? Uh, I do have. I do have an iPhone. Yeah, Sony sensor. Um, but what this is, is we're showcasing a combination of technologies, our CMOS sensors, 4K, high dynamic range, LiDAR, which is light detection and ranging, radar, ultrasonic, time of flight uh, sensors, in order to provide a, an autonomous vehicle. Uh, so the Vision S is our test bed for that. Um, and we have all of these different uh, sensors because obviously none of them can do everything. So they have to. So some sensors work better in clear weather. Some sensors are designed to show the difference between that morning sky and the traffic, you know, the dark. Um, yeah, so, that, so there's all kinds of ways that that these sensors need to work integration together. And that's really what Sony is bringing to the table is the integration of all of those parts. We don't. We make about 80% of the sensors, but we, we do the integration of all of them. Interior-wise, it's 360 reality audio, uh, and there's also... I mean, of course, it has to be at this point. There are, there are 30 speakers inside that car. Um, and there's also, there's also a driver camera, so if you've ever been in one of those situations where you're starting to doze off and pay attention, the car will be aware of that. 
Uh, so it's really cool. So well, that's particularly important if you're dealing with an autonomous or auto, uh, automated driving situation. Um, you know, we just talked to someone involved in automated driving as opposed to autonomous driving, mm -hmm. where the driver is still somewhat involved in the process. Um, and that was one of the concerns. You don't want the driver completely zoning out. Yeah, the, the idea for the Vision S is that it's a level five, which is yeah. autonomous. Um, and it's also the thing that's unique is you typically see companies who are either doing safety systems or audio systems for cars. Sony's doing both because we have that capability. So can we take a look? You absolutely can. This is, I don't know, man, it's actually a pretty awesome looking car. Yeah, so it's, it is actually Sony design. It was made by uh, Magnus Deer in uh, Austria, so they were they were the, they did the fabrication for us. Um, so one of the things I think is sort of interesting about this, and you, we'll be able to go around and see the other side, but you'll notice that the side mirrors are very small. They're actually just cameras. Uh, also, the rear view mirror is also not a mirror. Everything is a display. So, the, so, this, uh, so when we get around the side, you'll see that the two left and right mirrors are actually displayed on little screens on either side of the dash. Interesting. So those are cameras positioned where the mirrors would be, but the actual thing I'm looking at is right by the dash. Correct. So there are 33 sensors uh, inside and outside the car, 25 outside, 8 inside, that perform, like I said, a variety of, of safety and entertainment functions. One of the really interesting things uh, on the inside is that the, the dashboard is a panoramic screen. So it's divided into three segments. The instrumentation in front of the driver is fixed, but in the middle there's an information panel, and then on the right side there's an entertainment panel for the passenger. So, so there's a lot of interactivity with that. So let's say you and I were driving together and you said, hey, we got to go check out this new restaurant. You can pull the inform uh, information panel from the center and swap it, type in the navigation information at location, and then push it back to the center so that I can use it as the driver. So now, Sony is developing those systems that in theory, other car manufacturers would then integrate into their vehicles. Correct. Yeah, so it, it was much easier for us to, to, to design and build this vehicle than it would be to disassemble somebody else's and then reinstall all this. But if you look and you can see on the far right side, that's the right-hand mirror. Okay, that now that's, that's really cool. So the mirrors themselves are actually cameras that allow you to, that display whatever you're looking at, you know, whatever's behind you, on the display in what seems like a more ergonomically intelligent position. I don't have to look, you know, my eyes don't have to leave the road quite as much. Mm -hmm. They can just glance down right there to screen. They don't get dirty, um, all sorts of things. Um, are objects and mirrors still closer than they appear? Uh, I actually think that it's actually real time. <laughs> so, yeah, so you know, with this kind of situation, with you can do you can do high resolution uh, with that, so you don't have to uh, do artificial things. The, with the three cameras work in conjunction to give you a complete field of view behind you, so there are no blind spots. That's really great. That's certainly improving safety. Um, what other features? So, as cool as the car is, what other features are involved that would maybe get ported over to other vehicles? Well, I said the, the entertainment system, of course, is 360 reality audio. The sensors inside measure the number of passengers and their location. Um, I mean, those, those are sort of the, the, the interior sort of features, the fun stuff that you know, the customers enjoy. I mean, really, the idea is that all of these things are integrated into making into making the vehicle safer. So, why did why did Sony want to do this? Why do you want to enter? I mean, okay, car stereo is fine, but why did you want to enter this kind of uh, complete sensor uh, scenario where you're both developing for autonomous vehicles, but you're also developing safety situations, uh, you're developing audio, all these other components that maybe people think fall slightly outside the purview of Sony, what, you know, an entertainment company, what they think of as an entertainment company. Well, again, a lot of this is the result of our uh, proficiency in image sensors. Our image sensors, CMOS sensors are so far advanced that they offer better performance, which of course in a safety situation is, is much more important. Right. Like the high dynamic range capability, some of our sensors have a 40 stop range, which gives you an incredible <laughs> difference yeah. right between bright and dark, and as well as high resolution. You know, we, we do fully a lot of 4K, so you just the performance of the sensors lends itself to this, and then as I said, the integration of all these things together uh, is what really, was really what Sony is delivering, is that ability to determine which information is the most important and which is the information is the most accurate. And that's really that's really the discerning part because all this is not happening just in milliseconds but in nanoseconds. So it's really looking and saying we have this technology, we're capable of doing this, why not go into this market, move into this market, take this technology, develop these systems, since the technology is something Sony's already got in, in, in place, yeah, building. Yeah, the hardware is, is is pretty much in place. With the, I said the real focus is the integration, integration and understanding you know, what's the most appropriate device to make the decision. Uh, and that's really where Sony's focus is, is at. 
when, from the time that Sony decided to start working on this to the time where we were able to show a car with these features, how long has it been? I'm not sure when this car was developed. I didn't know that it existed until two hours before the press event. So this was, this was a well-kept secret. This entire area of the booth, and we were here on Saturday, was completely locked out. So that just shows how new, fresh, uh, innovative the stuff at CES is. Even the people working on it don't always know what's going to be here until they're here and it's unveiled. This is amazing. The car looks great. I mean, Sony might want to rethink the whole not getting into the car manufacturing business. Um, this is actually a really sweet looking ride. Um, but um, uh, anything else you can tell me about this uh, before we move on? Yeah, you'll notice in the, of course, in the back there's different displays for the rear passenger. So you can simultaneously have three separate audio and video tracks going. The headrests, uh, the, the shoulder portion of the seats have speakers built into them. Of course they do. Well, that's what they that, said. There were thirty, <laughs> so that's where at least eight of them are. They got to go somewhere. I mean, if I can't play my PlayStation in 3D sound, then why am I even driving? What's, yeah, what's the point of that? I, I don't even know. Um, all right, we're gonna move on. This is awesome. Okay, guys, uh, guys at home, I don't think you understand how excited I am. I really love this stuff. I get off on this stuff. Um, I like Sony products a lot. I've grown up with Sony products, so being able to check out what they've got coming is a lot of fun. Um, so if it's if I seem a little a few it's because I am. This is fun. Uh, you, you, all don't, you don't know what you're missing. I'm about to walk off a ledge here. Like yeah. uh, Adam behind the camera just pointed that out to me. Um, everyone at home is going, no, don't tell him. We want to see him take a spill. Um, all right, what's, what's this? I, I see a camera. You see a camera. So um, Sony, of course, is very heavily involved in the production of sports across the world, World Cup, all the major League American sports. Uh, uh, prime time college uh, athletics. Uh, so the two technologies we're showing here. This first one is, of course, a new ef efficient way of uh, giving having a remote camera. Oh. There are currently wireless systems in stadiums, but they need to be brought in and set up and dismantled by the, 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 the networks, right. which is a very time and cost, you know, it, uh, problem. Uh, so what we've done here, since a lot of these new stadiums are getting 5G networks, is we've built a 5G transmitter that can be connected to your 5G phone, which is what you see on top of there, the Sony Xperia 1, that little black box on the back is the uh, wireless transmitter. So now you don't, the networks don't need to bring in, you know, truckloads of equipment, and now the cameraman can be as mobile as they want to be. Let's go check this out. That's very cool. All right. I love the idea that we can use our phones as the, the sort of key piece of equipment that's linking things up. These things that we have with us anyway, um, why not use them for that? Yeah. So, so, so here we have a Sony 4K you know, sports camera. Um, and so like I said, the, on the back here is the is a transmitter box. And then, like I said, there's, and there's your device for the transmission. So it goes right out to the production van. That is sweet, and that certainly makes life a lot easier. You know, we've done sports coverage at uh, Be Terrific. We did basketball games, and we had to bring in um, 14 cameras and uh, 15 million, um, 15 million uh, microphones, but we had to bring in miles of cable, mm -hmm. you know, and to be able to avoid that for something like that would be fantastic, make everyone's life a little easier. Um, that's a great system, and it's compact. These cameras are already big enough. Having to load more onto them is uh, yeah. not fun. It, it makes it much easier on the camera. And like I say, now you can get into places where you couldn't before. Yeah. Uh, and just and just from a time perspective, it, every, all of these new stadiums are going to have 5G networks in them because everybody's on their phone making bets. Yeah. Right. Well, now here's my other question. I mean, it looks like the technology itself could be used in any application. If I'm out there news gathering and we're in a 5G environment, um, pop this on my camera, pop this on my camera, my FS7, let's say, yeah. and then boom, I'm broadcasting back to the studio. That would, that would absolutely be possible when 5G networks become more prevalent in cities and other areas. Definitely would make news gathering and journalism much easier uh, and, and more, uh, more, more quick. Or if you're at your family get-together and you want to beam stuff back to grandma. I mean, I don't know what this unit would cost, but the phone costs what a phone costs, and you got your camera, and you take it from there. Yeah. I'm sure Sony will work that out. Grandma's, we, grandma's counting on you. Yeah, we will absolutely be figuring that out for you. <laughs> All right, what else do we have? So, so really the cool. Sports line, um, one of the things that we're doing is we're actually doing motion capture. Uh, as, you, as you know, more and more sporting events, you're starting to see uh, metrics, how far the yeah. home run flew and how this guy threw the pass. You see all these launch angles. All of those are currently done after the play is over. Somebody, somebody in the production truck does all the little magic and makes that happen. What we're doing is real time. 
Uh, so unfortunately, the ping pong guys aren't pinging and ponging right at the moment. <laughs> um, but what we have here are six cameras that are actually doing what we call bone detection. So they're actually doing a motion capture of the players. The two stereo cameras up top are tracking the actions, they're tracking the ball. So for ping pong, it's speed of the ball. One of the things I didn't realize, it was the rotation. Rotations oh. per second, I guess that's why, you know, you have to get backspin right, right. going on, on that. Um, and then what, one of the things we're doing, just because it's Sony and we can, is we can actually take that bone detection of that ball and we can render it as a cartoon. So we've been rendering it as characters from oh. Hotel Transylvania. <laughs> Very cool. So. Again, more motion capture, it's becoming more and more prevalent in everything. Yeah, so the nice thing about this is this is all real time. Uh, so not only from professional sports aspect, um, but also from a, tra a coach's training perspective, this is what your jump shot looks like in the first five minutes of a game. Here's what it looks like in the last five minutes of the game. The changes in that work. I've had a lot of people come through here and say, this would really help my golf game. You know, be able to do that motion capture without having to wear the suit with the little ping pong balls on it. I can imagine. Um, and I have to ask, I mean, was ping pong symbolic? Uh, it's, you know, we're getting rid of the ping pong balls. We're going to show you in ping pong. Am I reading too far into this? No, we're not, we're not getting rid of the ping pong ball. There's some of the pictures of the motion capture and stuff. Um, it's, it, 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 ping pong, quite frankly, was a very small sporting event that we could put in a booth. Fair enough. Right? Fair enough. Um, okay. So what else we got since they, we're not running this right now? Um, right. Uh, so obviously you've, you've talked about, you've seen our cameras and talked about them. Um, yes. This year we don't have all of our DI products on display, but we do have uh, a selection of our uh, uh, Alpha Series, uh, A7, uh, Alpha 7 uh, R4 and Alpha 7 S2, uh, in conjunction with our um, Venice Cam and our FX9. Uh, so we're, so we're, part of what we're showcasing here is the, con the continuity of the product. All of these cameras use the same E-mount system. So all of the lens lenses are interchangeable. Um, and also, as you mentioned earlier, S-Log3, all of these cameras have that capability to do that. So again, as a, as a creator, as a film director, uh, you're going to get a consistent performance from all of these cameras. Even our Xperia phone has the Cine Alta Venice software in it. Obviously a very stripped down version, um, but it is there for the person who wants to use their phone. And these are all full frame sensors as well. Yeah, full, frame, full frame sensors, yes. Sir. So we have cinema, we have the, the pro software. So I can choose the lens I want, the ISO, the white balance. I can choose resolution. I can choose different color styles. Uh, so I have different lookup tables. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a stripped down version, but even on my Xperia phone, I have the ability to be a video creator. It's really cool from a filmmaking point of view, being able to have cameras that match, I mean, Okay, yes, the Venice is not going to completely match with an A7R, of course. But, but if you're shooting everything, if you say we're going to shoot everything 4K, or we're going to shoot everything HD uh, within whatever the capabilities of your lowest end camera might be, having all the same size sensor, having mm -hmm. all the same um, uh, S-Log3, being able to say, okay, our A cam is going to be the FX9, and we're going to have the A7R as our B cam, and we're going to stick a couple of these things over there, and knowing the footage is going to match up makes everyone's life a lot easier in post-production. So I like that consistency that runs through the Sony line. Yeah, and I also forgot to mention our RX0, which is this camera here. Now, it's obviously a smaller sensor, but if you're trying to do body cams and things like that, it lends itself. We're also using them for the motion capture uh, over there. Uh, so, yeah, so we actually actually have a variant on the Venice that you may or may not be familiar with called the Rialto. So they've taken the lens from the body and attached it to a tether. So you can really get the camera into a very small space. So I don't know if this will show up very well on your camera, but this is a scene from the upcoming Top Gun Maverick. And those are the four lenses from Sony Venice cameras being able to shoot Tom Cruise in flight. Oh, that's very, very cool. Right. And you'd never be able to get another kind of camera in that position. Those shots just would be very, very difficult to, to get. You'd have to do them in post. Um, that is the most uh, amazing dash cam I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that you'll be seeing that in any cars coming soon, including the Sony Vision S. Um, it's, a little, it's a little over the top. <laughs> Um, but hey, so is Top Gun. Um, so we're going to take a quick look over here. So this is the FX9. Um, we saw this at NAB New York. Um, very cool camera. It is an evolutionary leap forward from the FS7, uh, which is what I use, which is a, um, a uh, Super 35 inch sensor, Super 35 sensor. This is a full frame sensor, a lot of other capabilities. Um, it's a super cool looking camera. Um, and then the mighty Venice. Oh, man. 
with uh, an awesome Sony uh, 25 millimeter lens on it. Man, this is uh, cool stuff from Sony, man. Yeah, one of the things that it always surprises people is that you know you see the Academy Awards with all the you know the fancy people, but there's also a technical awards. And the Sony Venice camera was launched one an Academy Award for the advancement of film production. So again, Academy Award winning, you know, cutting edge technology coming from Sony for, for, from, you know, from every aspect. What's cool is you can graduate up through the cameras and basically know how they work. I'm familiar with the FS7, I'm familiar with shooting with S-Log3. I could pick up the Venice and you know, give a little bit of a work through to figure out sure. the camera, but when I'm, when I'm working with exposure, when I'm working with all those sorts of things, the, the, the techniques I've picked up on the FS7 are going to translate over because S-Log3 is S-Log3. Yeah, they're definitely going to transfer throughout the product line. Uh, a lot of these cameras are more specialized, right? The, 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 resolu the R model, of course, is a you know, high resolution camera. The S is a high sensitivity. It's only a 12, mega, uh, 12 megapixel sensor, right. but it has an ISO of 400,000. <laughs> 400,000. Uh, so yes, yeah, so it shoots in dark. If you've, if you've seen the yeah. Planet Earth series, the bioluminance plants and insects, those were shot with the Sony S7. Wow, that's crazy. I mean, I remember when it, uh, it um, uh, the movie, uh, it'll come to me. Now I'm totally blanking, but um, uh, anyway, we'll come back to this thought. But it involved shooting in candlelight, and they used a ridiculously fast lens to make it happen, and it was a pain in the ass. But if you have a ISO 400,000, I think you're pretty good to go. All right, so uh, anything else? Turn around. Uh, what am I looking at? You're looking at Sony's Crystal LED. This is a modular system over there on the lower right side. You'll see a little painted square on the wall. That is the size of the individual panels. This panel is made up of 72 independent uh, modules. It's 9 feet tall by 16 feet wide, so it's, uh, it's normal aspect ratio. It is a 4K display in terms of pixels. Um, with the Crystal LED technology, uh, the, the crystal LED, the actual, uh, pic, the actual pixel is the thickness of a human hair. And so about 99% of that screen is black space. So on a performance level, the bottom end brightness is 0 0.005 nits. And on the top end, it's 1,000. And unlike a conventional television where you measure peak brightness on a 10% window, if you put a white screen up there, it's 1,000 nits across the entire thing, and it's absolutely blinding. Uh, so, so this has been commercially available uh, for about three years. Uh, we announced at Cedia 2019 a few months ago that it was now available for consumers. So, Ryan, if you want this, this can be installed in your house for just under a million dollars. Okay, so um, this is going out to my wife right now. I know what I want for my birthday in April. If we start saving now, maybe we can make this happen. I noticed you didn't say April of what year. Well, yeah, yeah, for my 100th birthday. Um, by then, the technology will probably cost like a dollar. It might. Uh, there's a long way to go for that, but, it, it's, but it's completely modular. Uh, so actually, the largest installation that we currently have is at the Shiseido uh, Cosmetic Company in Tokyo. Their display is 18 feet, so it's twice as tall, and it's 64 feet wide, so it's four wow. times the width. And it's in their lobby, and it just shows beautiful things. Um, one of the things that we're starting to do with this um, is we're starting to use this as a check in post-production. So if you've done any sort of film or TV work, you might be familiar with Sony's BVM X300, uh, another Academy Award winning product. Um, and it's a color and grading monitor. Um, it's OLED, but it's only 30 inches in diameter. So it's very difficult in very complex scenes to get close enough to see a lot of detail. So they'll do the work on the grading monitor and then they'll put it up on a display of that size, because now you can see everything 50 times larger. And it's much easier to see that the, the color and the contrast are correct. You didn't miss something in the CGI that all of a sudden becomes blazingly apparent because now it's on a theater-sized screen. Wow. This is incredible looking. I mean, and you can't even tell that it's made up of panels. I mean, it looks like a single seamless uh, display. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very different than the kinds of things you typically see at like a sporting event where you can see the different modules together and, and there's a lot of black space. This is, this is a completely seamless picture. Um, it's actually laser aligned. It took these guys about three days to assemble this. Um, but it, obviously you can, you can see it's precision. Uh, it's, the same, it's obviously the same display that we use in the back of the Ghostbusters. So that's right. the, the same technology. Um, 
Yeah, so we're pretty excited about it. Um, it offers a lot of opportunities on the professional market, and the commercial market, and then we hope someday on the consumer market because you get all of the contrast benefits of, of an OLED type television with the brightness benefits of an LCD. It even has a 180 degree viewing angle, so if you walk all the way to the side, there's no color shift or fade. That's incredible. Uh, looks fantastic. I mean, it's it's... Yeah, it looks fantastic. I don't even know what else to say. Um, all right, so we, we've made a pretty big circle around the booth. Is there much left? Yes, so we have some of our 2020 TVs uh, on display as well as our Master Series TVs, which were launched about 18 months ago. Master Series is Sony's, I guess I would say, professional consumer televisions. You know, we talk about the consistency of, of performance, you know, in our studio monitors and something like Crystal LED. Master Series is designed to replicate those uh, uh, perf that performance as closely as possible. Each Master Series TV is individually calibrated before it leaves the factory, uh, so there's a high level of detail. Uh, the two uh, ones that we're showcasing here, like I said, came out uh, a few months ago, but we have our A9G uh, 4K OLED, and then our uh, Z9G 8K, which is available in 85-inch uh, and 98-inch. Wow, these are... Uh Super sharp. I mean, it looks like we're there. I don't know how this is translating to the viewers back home, but uh, the level of detail and the color and the just the smoothness of it all is pretty incredible. Um, eh, I mean, I'm assuming you're feeding 4K content into the 4K TVs. Absolutely. Yeah, 4K content, 4K HDR. Um, one of the things that's sort of unique about both of these televisions is, as I pointed out earlier, Sony is an audio company. Um, so we've incorporated some uh, new technologies because as TVs have evolved and gotten thinner, uh, the sound has become, and I hope your viewers won't mind if I use the technical term here, has become crappy. Um, <laughs> so what we tried to, so what we've done here with in all of our OLEDs, since an OLED is a sheet of glass with the pixels embedded in it, we've actually put a, acoustic actuators on the back of the television, and we microscopically vibrate the screen to produce sound. So the entire shot, the entire uh, picture is the sound, is, is the speaker. That's very cool. So the, the speaker cone that we're used to seeing move back and forth and whatever, it's actually the glass plane actually, that's become the resonating surface. Correct. So it's a, it's a very cinematic experience where right? you go to the movies, it's still today about 80% of the sound still comes through the screen. Uh, and one of the things that's sort of interesting when you watch this is if you and I were being viewed on the screen, your sound, your voice would come from that side of the screen, and my voice would come from the right side of the screen, and it would actually be very cinematic. Um, the first time that I, I turned around in my house, it was like, this is a really exciting experience because it makes TV watching very different, or TV listening very different. So you get to have this stuff in your house, man. That is the, the do, you have one, do you have one of those? The, the big I, I, giant I, I would, screen? I, I, Sony would have to buy me a bigger house first. <laughs> Um, but yeah, obviously we'd all love to have that. Um, yeah, one of the perks of the job is I do get to play with some of the fun stuff. Oh, that's very cool. One of the perks of the job is I get, uh, well, they bought me lunch. That's a thing. Okay, that's that's a, a perk of the job. Yeah. Um, okay, what are, what are these um, so, besides Giant? So these are our uh, Sony 8K Z9G. This is the 98 inch uh, and an 85 inch. So the 85 inch is what, about 15 now, Caleb? 13,000. 13, you want to take a guess on what the 98 inch? Uh, I'm going to go with... Uh, 47. 47,000. You're about 60% of the way there. It's 70. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> so so maybe for maybe for Father's Day you could get something like that. Instead of, <laughs> right. instead of I got to get kid first. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> um, um, so again, you know, from you know, so 8K uh, resolution um, again from a sound performance standpoint, we can't vibrate an LCD screen It's made up of layers. Uh, on this model, we've actually put you'll see there's this little stair step at the top of the display. There's two forward-firing speakers at the top, two forward-firing speakers at the bottom, plus two subwoofers in the back. Another thing that's unique about both of these TVs is that they have what we call center channel mode. So if you have a surround sound system, you can take the center channel output of your receiver, plug it into the back of the TV via speaker, and now the TV acts as your oh. center channel. Similar to the, the technology we saw on the other TVs. Right, yeah, so both of the TVs have that capability because if you can imagine on a TV this size, the center channel is going to be six inches off the floor. There's a big audio disconnect, right? So by having the sound come through the speaker, again, we get that more immersive, more realistic experience. Very cool, very cool. It looks great, um, you know, as we've seen from all the monitors, all the screens we've seen so far. Uh, this looks fantastic. Um, wow. Uh, is there more, or are well, we I at mean, the end? There's always more, but I, mean, I think one of the things, <laughs> you know, with 4K TV and even 8K TV, one of the things that Sony spends a lot of time talking about is processing. 
uh, because the picture is not the picture. If you think about what customers are still watching today in HD, an HD signal is, if it's NAP, is 2 million pixels. A 4K TV has 8 million pixels. This has 33 million pixels. So if I'm watching something on a 4K TV, 2 million pixels coming in, 8 million pixels being displayed, there's a 6 million pixel disconnect. 75% of the picture you're watching is created by the, the television. And so that's why Sony as a professional entertainment company spends so much time talking about processing because that's where you're seeing the real benefit of that. Right? In the upscaling the of upscaling, it. Exactly. And upscaling is not just resolution, it's also color and contrast. Uh, as as you know, the TV performance improves, this, this particular television uh, was reviewed uh, and was, uh, the, the brightness was rated at 3950 nits. So this is almost a complete, and that was after calibration. Um, so it's a, it's a very bright TV, which means if you're watching Dolby Vision, you're getting the full Dolby Vision spec. Well, gorgeous, looks great, um, and is bigger than me. So that's good <laughs> to know. Um, very cool, man. Um, I have to say, I'm impressed with a lot of the technology that Sony's putting out there. I'm, I'm particularly impressed with the applications that you're putting it towards with the car and everything else. Um, what do we expect to see from Sony in the future? Um, anything, I mean, I know this is all sort of future tech, but what are the big picture projects that Sony is kind of looking at five years out, 10 years out? Can you, can I, you say I, yet? I honestly don't have that sort of information. I think you can see there's a lot of applications that you even talked about um, you know, for, for gaming, things like that, that you know, we haven't considered. Um, you know, we're looking at you know, all more, more and more ways of using this technology. We want to expand people's immersion in their entertainment, right, picture and sound. Uh, and information uh, and safety, uh, just to be able to give customers the kind of experience they're looking for. Great. Um, well, David, thank you so much for giving me a tour of Sony, uh, like you said, the cavern, the cavern of Sony. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, we're seeing the sort of technology that CES is known for bringing people. Sony really is uh, really bringing it home. Um, uh, is there anything else I need to know? I feel like we've seen a lot, but... Oh, we've seen a lot. Of, uh, we've launched a couple of new 2020 TVs around the other side if you want to take a quick look at Oh, that. yeah, sure. That's okay. a few things that consumers can actually buy. Yeah, well, these consumers can buy these. Um, some consumers. Some consumers. Uh, so we're also launching um, two new models. Uh, we have a uh, Z8H, which is a new uh, 8K model. Uh, so we have that available in 75 and 85 inch. Um, the processor is the same uh, for picture processing. It actually uh, won a Best of CES award a couple of years ago. Um, one of the things that differentiates that TV from this TV is the backlight. Uh, in order to improve color and contrast on an LCD TV, you, you improve the backlight. Uh, our Z9G has something called Backlight Master Drive. It's a Sony technology where each individual LED on the back is separately controlled. So it's not a local dimming zone, it's each one is individual, where this is more of a precision full array. The other thing that we did is if you look at the back of the Z9 models, they're very robust. It's the Hummer of television. You know, like Backlight Master Drive is a very robust system, requires you know, fairly substantial uh, framing and stuff like that. What we did with this one, uh, we, we did put the speakers in the forward firing speakers on the bottom, but as I said before, you can't vibrate the panel, but you know what you can vibrate? The metal frame. So we put acoustic actuators on the sides, and so we call this a frame tweeter. Huh. And so now, again, we're lifting the sound stage, and because human dialogue is typically reproduced in the higher frequencies, you get better performance for the thing that people most want to hear, which is dialogue and vocals and, and all that. That is a clever solution to uh, the problem of putting speakers in something which is essentially a pane of glass. Yes, absolutely. So again, sound is such an important part of the experience, and we want to make sure that customers uh, can get the best possible experience that they, that they can from Sony. Very cool. Um, anything else? No, I think uh, we, uh, we have new OLEDs too. Take a quick look at the yeah, new OLEDs, and then we'll uh, and then uh, yeah, this is uh, quite the tour. So these are the A8H uh, again, using the same uh, Master Series processor uh, as we have before, same acoustic surface um, in 55 and 65 inch. Uh, just you know, just really exciting TVs. OLEDs are becoming very popular because of their contrast capabilities. Uh, they have a very cinematic feel to them. Uh, so we're really excited to have these come out. They'll be out in the next few months uh, at your local retailer. What do these sell for? Uh, Sony, you know, Sony has an announced pricing. You do, Brian, know what Sony stands for, right? What does Sony stand for? Soon, only not yet. <laughs> okay, well, you heard it from them. Um, 
great looking TV. So you know, check check your local stores for for prices yeah. when it's available. Um, there's a little like click on button for pricing type of thing that we usually get. Um, great. Well, listen, um, I don't even know where our camera went. Okay, there is. There's our camera. David, thank you so, much, so much for the Brian. tour. This has been a lot of fun. This is Brian Stillman with Be Terrific, touring the Sony Cavern, not the booth, the cavern at CES 2020, looking at all sorts of new technology, from screens to cameras to cars to everything in between. We're going to keep bringing you com uh, all sorts of technology from CES. Stick around. We've got a lot more. Be Terrific.